Hello again, everyone. I'm Todd Miller. We're visiting now with the head of women's volleyball coach at Oklahoma Baptist University, Anna Howe. Oklahoma Baptist coming off just a terrific weekend in which they went 4-0 up in Wichita, sweeping four MIAA opponents. And we'll talk about two of the biggest wins. But, Coach, right now you and your program have to be riding on uh, cloud nine. Yeah, we definitely are. We had a great weekend and I was so proud of the girls and how they worked and played as a team. And, and it really took everybody. I mean, we had... Our, our, you know, our bench was really, really involved and really strong leadership there. And um, the people on the court, I just, just so proud of their drive and their desire and their passion for winning. And, um, you know, when you want it more than the other team, their coach can feel it. And I could just feel how much we wanted it. And I'm, I'm really proud of them. You know, win, lose, or draw going up to Wichita, Anna, how important was it for this program, which has established itself now as one of the 20 best in the country, I think, year in and year out, was it for you to have an opportunity to play good competition outside of your own conference? Yeah, I mean, for us, it was really, really important. And I was really thankful um, that, you know, in a tough time with COVID that our athletic director let us go. Um, it was really great that Robert was supportive of us and um, going to this tournament. And, um, you know, for us, it was, we need to see this competition. So we need to know how we can raise the bar continually and, you know, start Starting out, you know, Newman Newman did a great job of, of putting a little bit of pressure on us. And, and it, I think it just prepared us for the Washburn match later that afternoon on Friday. And, you know, Washburn, they have um, they have a middle on that team that is very, very impressive um, as an attacker. And, you know, la last in 2019, when we went to the regional, I sat with our middles and we just watched this girl and we talked about how you know, we, we really needed to attack that way if we wanted to be a top 10 team, which is, which is our program goal is to really establish ourselves as a top 10 team and, and make people um, really have to think about us that way. And our middles have had this picture in their mind of this girl. And, and when we played against them, we, we really tried to focus on stopping her, but we've, we've spent a year and a half trying to attack similar to her. And and really against Washburn, our middles, our middles did that. Um, of course, Malia, as our, you know, All-American, she played absolutely exceptional against Washburn. I mean, that's, that's one of the best volleyball showing she's ever given um, and, and just really, really a brilliant player. Um, but, you know, we, that was just a really, really solid team effort. Um, and, you know, to have to come back the next morning and do it again against very, very great competition is not easy. Um, and we started out playing really well, and then you could tell the fatigue kind of got for, got to us in sets two and three, and we just couldn't control the ball very well. And um, and then there was just that push of hunger and desire of wanting to come back. And you know that team got us in five at their place, which we we should have gotten them last year or in 2019. And um, then we played them again in the regional, and and so our girls, you know, on, on our goal sheet is beat Carney, and to be down 10-2 and to have that grit. Um, and the love for each other in the game um, and believe is just very impressive by our team. And, and I was very proud of them. And you were talking about how Malia played against Washburn. She was huge in coming back in that fifth set against Carney when you were down 10 to. She was, she was really, she really turned it on and, and we kind of tried to rest her. I tried to balance it enough so that in sets two and three, when, when we weren't doing very well to give her some rest and all that stuff. And, and we ended up not even, needing to play against Missouri Western. We, uh, one of our freshmen just really, really stepped up. And I think, I think that was a benefit for us in Missouri Western too, is because, you know, that's a hard, it's hard to come back and play that fourth match after you've had this like just crazy emotions going on on Friday, Friday afternoon and Saturday morning. And um, so that was good because our freshman Bierica Ryerson did really, really well. Um, but Malia, you know, she just came back and attacked so well, but, but I would really, if I was going to, if I was going to hand some heart really hand a heart award. I would probably say Kelsey Chavez and Deanna um, Arlobero were just spectacular in that fourth and fifth set. Um, you know, Deanna, we I, I, was, I almost get emotional talking about the match for Deanna um, because the first two times we played Carney, they really exploited Deanna as our libero, her weaknesses. And, um, you know, it, that, that's, that's really hard when they exploit your weaknesses like that. In 2019, they just really did it. And her and I have been talking about this and I just, I wanted so much for her to have that fight back. And, and she really, she really did it for us in that fifth set. I mean, she was so important in that fifth set. And, you know, my heart just, 
is so happy for what she got to do um, and feel coming back from that. Okay, uh, win, lose, or draw, this was a good weekend for you because yeah. you're such a young team still. Mm -hmm. To yeah. allow these young people, that some of which you just mentioned, to get into this type of atmosphere against that type of nationally ranked competition, how valuable of an experience was that for you? So valuable. Um, you know, the freshmen don't understand, they didn't understand the goal of who's this Carney we want to beat. Um, and as we go through the match, you know, we use most of our upper classes most of the time, but, but that feeling that they had to feel and that get on board with us, we want to be great, um, was so evident. And it, and, you know, you can just, you, you could even tell in our warm up, they're all getting up and trying to hit hard balls and their, their growth is just incredible when they see the, the passion of that. Um, and then to see that tough competition and really rise to the occasion as freshmen is a, is a really, really big deal. Um, and I, I was really proud of our freshmen. They, you know, there, there's always some bumps in the road when you're a freshman um, and trying to step up and play really well. Um, but there was a lot to be learned. I think one of the most impressive um, growth weekends was probably Avery Helmuth, our um, freshman middle. Um, she really grew this weekend. She had a couple of bumps in the road this the, the weeks before where I was pretty hard on her and just said, you've got to be more passionate about blocking. Like you can't, you can't just get away with what you want to get away with. And she took that very much to heart and experienced a lot of growth over the over these last two weeks and it came to I mean it just came really into fruition this week and and Audrey you know Audrey is, was defensive player of the week in the GAC last week and and she was exceptional I mean she she was one of the ones I've sat down with and we watched that Washburn middle over and over again and she has that picture in her mind and she's being that plus being a great blocker so I'm just I'm really proud of our middles it was it was huge for them. OB volleyball coach Anna Hallett's our guest. Um, coach, you're without um, arguably one of the top players at her position in the conference in Ryland Moore, but Kaylee Buell, uh, Buell, uh, Buell has stepped up and played just fabulous at the center position for you. She has. She is. She really understands um, how to make our hitters successful. Um, so she has just put our hitters in these situations where they have a one-on-one -on -one block situation, which, which is really important. We have really good ball control as far as our passing is concerned most of the time and defensively. Um, but, but Kaylee's decisions has made our hitters able to be successful. And she's doing an, a fantastic job of, of mixing up the offense and um, working to make our hitters get that confidence that you get when you have a one-on-one -on -one situation, you can just go up and bounce a ball. You know, they, they love that situation. And Kaylee has done a really great job of that. And, and she's a, Kaylee is an exceptional athlete. Um, she, you know, she's, she's done some hitting for us. She's done some DSing and now as a setter, she's, her mind has really come together as far as how to win volleyball games. And she's doing a great job with it. Is it fair to say this is the best weekend you've had since you've been the head coach and you restarted this program in 2008? Yeah, I mean, th there's been some other really great weekends that we've had, you know, when we were, when we finished number five in the NAI, that was pretty big time for us. And we've done some really good things, but I was telling, um, we, I have lunch with uh, our head women's basketball coach um, and his assistant. We eat lunch together almost every day and we get to talk about some things. And, um, and I told him, I said, I, it hasn't felt much better than what this weekend was for us. Congratulations, just a fabulous weekend. You may see these people again. You're going to go up to Carney uh, in, in April, which is another good test for you. Yeah, it will be. Um, you know, that's going to be kind of like a mini national tournament, I would say. So um, they're going to have some RMAC schools. There's some Lone Star schools, and some Northern Sun. So we've got some schools in there that are big time, big time volleyball. And, um, you know, we're all about continuing, continuing our growth and our quest for you know, being a top team in, in NCAA division two. And um, that tournament, we're really looking forward to that because whether we go up and win against everybody or we go up and lose against everybody, we're going to grow so that when we come back in 2021 fall, we are establishing ourselves every single time that we get the opportunity to play. And, and honestly, like that's going to be a great competition. And so is this weekend, but the GAC is definitely something that needs to be known nationally. Um, and I think it's really important. I think our weekend was important for the Great American Conference. Um, and it, it, we need to keep doing that as a conference because I think we are definitely nationally competitive. And, and the growth that we have as a conference is 
huge and people need to know that, that the GAC is a very, very strong conference. I have to ask you, you're on a roll. That means you want to keep playing, I'm sure, but you also could use some rest and you're going to get a little bit of an un, un, unexpected break in the schedule with Southeastern having some problems and having to cancel on Tuesday. Does it bother you to have a week off now? Well, it kind of, we're, we're trying to schedule a match for Friday at OCU. So we would like to play. Um, my girls are hungry to play and I want them to get that opportunity, but we also do need the rest. This was, you know, we're, we're the only, they brought us up there. We're the only non MIAA team to come up. Um, and so they brought us up there to play people. I don't think they brought us up there to beat everyone. Uh, I'm sure. They brought us up there to play everyone. And so we played the most matches, which is, it was exhausting. It was a, it was a long, tough grind of a weekend for us. So they're off, they were off yesterday. They're off today. Um, we'll get in and have some fun tomorrow and then get a little bit of training done. Um, Cause Northwestern is very, very good volleyball, which we have in our gym next Tuesday. And um, they are somebody we need to be prepared for. And so, you know, OCU is a great NAIA program and we want to be able to play some good volleyball again with, with teams that know how to win. Um, and so we can be prepared for next Tuesday when we get Northwestern here. Obviously your frontline players have always been key, but you've always told me to take the next step, we've got to build depth. And I think you've achieved that now because when I've watched you on video, when I've watched you in person, um, depth looks like it's better than maybe it's been since I've been around the program. Yeah, definitely. I mean, our it's it's hard to win for the A side to beat the B side in practice because some anybody on the B side could pop onto the A side and we could still be really, really good. Um, and so, you know, it, it's a constant competition in practice, which I think is really important. Yeah, the Washburn coach pulled me aside and he said, where are you getting these kids? And, and I said, you know, for us, we bring in some great athletes that are willing to work and buy in because we train really hard and they just, they have to love it. And if they love it, they'll grow really fast. And we have a couple other kids that are, are loving it. And, you know, we've got some really great senior leadership, whether the senior, all of our seniors are playing or they're not, they believe in putting in the work and they love to put in the work. And they're, they set a great example for our underclassmen to, to say, Hey, if you want to be this, this is what you need to do to be there. And I think a lot of our underclassmen are buying into that. And that's given us a lot of depth. I know that this fall or spring, I guess, has been very beneficial for you. Not the same type feel as you get, obviously, during the regular fall season. But we may look back in the building process of this program. And this brief schedule that you're playing may turn out to be one of the best things for Bison Volleyball. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think we always tell people because, you know, like, as far as our training is concerned, we can get people to really buy into our training. If, if they're here and they love OBU and they'll buy into the training, they get good. But we usually don't get the, that opportunity to train them until after we've had a season. So with the fall being a training season this year instead of an actual schedule and us having so many young freshmen, it made all the difference in the world for us. You know, we, we needed to get that training going before we could play. Um, and normally, in any other normal year, you don't get that. And for us this year, that was huge for us to be able to train. Because usually after the spring, when we've gotten to just train, we're pretty good. But then you bring in new kids the next year, and you have to restart that process, and you only have two weeks until you play games. And so for us to have that fall, you know, I guess I'm jealous of, I'm jealous of basketball and softball and all those sports that have, you know, that, that season to train before they have to go in and win. Um, and we, we get two weeks to train and then you got to go win, you know? And so for us, that's been really important. And I, I completely agree with you. This shortened season here in the spring is very important for our program. Always good to see you. So many people are proud of what you're doing in, in your, your, your volleyball team and those, those young women that represent OBU, not just in a winning manner, but in a first-class manner. Keep it up and we'll look forward to visiting with you down the line. Thanks, Todd. I appreciate it. And I